I'd like to thank my patrons for making these videos possible, especially Morten Jepesen, who I have good reason to believe is full of dreams, hopes, and loves that would shock us all with their sincerity and relatability if we only knew their secret heart. Artists naturally move through a variety of mindsets as they work. Some of these are necessary. We think differently when sketching around, searching for a new idea, than we do when we're finishing a long-term drawing, for example. Some are mostly unnecessary. The restricted, unhelpfully hypercritical, self-loathing mind state that artists are often subjected to is an example. Other mindsets are more esoteric, usually only available to artists who have sought them out and created the proper conditions for their arising. For example, a mindset I've heard called being on the form, where rendering the form in a picture begins to feel like you are pushing and pulling the surface of a real object. That's a mind state I utilize often, personally, and can happily recommend. Mindsets like that are usually very niche, only of interest for artists that work a certain way towards a certain goal. But for that kind of artist, they really do become a tool, just like anything in your pencil box. Being in the mindset, focused, tends to produce better results. It might actually be the only way to produce the result that you're looking for. And conversely, realizing you are not in that mindset makes for a good alarm of sorts. It lets you know that you're distracted, that you're not quite there. So let's investigate this concept more and explore some of these mental states that frame our drawing experience. If this concept is alien to you, let me list some common conflicts between state and action that could use some smoothing out in many art practices. The first one is a favorite I love to rail on about. The way we tend to forget we are drawing when we switch between parts of the process. When we're making a picture, we are always drawing. The drawing mind is the primary ground of 2D picture making. When we're shading, we are drawing. When we're filling in flat shapes, we are drawing. When we're applying color, we are drawing. Now, shading or rendering or whatever term you like to use is a part of people's process that suffers greatly from not paying attention to this truth. Tell me this hasn't ever happened to you. You've got the pencils out for the beginning of your process. You've been using them to linearly define contours and the exteriors of forms on something. You're jumping to the interior occasionally to describe major contrast points and the outlines of graphic shapes. As you're doing this, you're firmly in the drawing mindset, right? You're mapping, following, connecting, finding proportions, and creating form in the sense that you are placing volumes into space in their simplest sense. You're trying to be attuned to the angles of things you're interpreting as lines, the negative space between those lines, just everything. You're in the full-on drawing mindset. And then the blending stump comes out and you intuitively switch to this other mindset, the shading or blending mindset, which you misinterpret as just softening, just blending. And then you run all over your drawing and blah, soften everything that you already put down. And then you think, wow, blending stumps are terrible. Look, it just softened everything, made everything kind of disappear and lose its structure. And then some art teacher says, yes, you shouldn't use those. You should hatch everything. And you say, yes, yes, because I have experienced that blending stumps are bad. They give bad results. No, you did not experience the inherent badness of blending stumps. You just let your mindset get out of hand. When you're shading, blending, softening, whatever, you're still drawing. You just happen to be drawing on the inside of the form with softer and often broader shapes. Rendering and shading should still feel like drawing. That's what makes this a mind state question. It's about how you feel while you're experiencing this. It should feel like you are creating volume and space when you're shading, making things more interesting and adding new and exciting information rather than rotely softening stuff you already laid out. Well, okay, I can feel myself getting a little heated. Sorry, this is a hobby horse of mine. And so for many artists, they grasp what it takes to render well 
by, I don't know quite how to put it, they grasp it by trying on this better mindset rather than by gaining any technical knowledge about how to create soft edges of which there is very little. The change in thinking at those crucial junctures where we go to a different step in our process is when we need to be mindful of what state we are leaving and what state we are going into. Other common mindset issues. Thinking that adding color to a drawing is just its own abstract, fluffy coloring step. Nope, still drawing. Saturation can only be achieved by certain hues within certain value ranges. Value is tied to interactions with the light source. Interactions with the light source are determined by angles. Angles are drawing concerns. Boom, color is drawing. Surprise! Temperature shifts in color often show the difference between top planes, down planes, reflected light areas. All of those are parsed out in your mind via drawing questions. Okay, I'm going too much into technical mindset disconnects. Here's some emotional ones. That's why you're here on this channel, right? Emotional ones. So for example, letting your branding and posting mindset show up during creation time. Er, no, no good. Save it for later. By contrast, letting your soulful, noble artist mindset show up during ruthless rate negotiations and marketing opportunities. Not the most useful. Get your money. More nuanced. We're probably all familiar with the rule-concerned drawing mindset. Your mind is primed for some reason to navigate its way through the act of creation by constantly pinging rules it has heard of, and it tries to get to the end of the drawing process by jumping from one rule to the next. Often I get into this state when I've heard a particularly good technical tip, and I want to try it out. It colors the whole rest of the process. It's like, if I'm going to use a rule in the middle of the process, I might as well use the rules in the beginning and the end as well. Then there is the opposite mindset, the unstructured open creation mindset. It draws however things happen to come out in the moment. It doesn't seek the help of rules, but it also doesn't reject them on principle when they flit on through. Is that the most appropriate mindset when addressing notes for a client, let's say. Likely not. There is an infinite multiplicity of mindsets like these, and they're all useful and not useful at different times. They're also free for you to seize and utilize as you see fit. And it's a useful artistic discipline to be alert to their comings and goings and see if they're in the wrong spots. Are you thinking too much of the finish when you're doing your sketches? Is it making you torture your sketches that want to be something else into the form of something you know you can finish? Or the opposite, are you subtly in the sketching mindset, that is to say, very open to new ideas, when you're trying to finish a 100-hour drawing? Is your mind serving up alluring new images of pictures that whisper your time would be better spent starting on a new, superior? Maybe this one, rather than investing so much time into this mediocre one that you have dumped a week into. Is that diluting your attention for the finish when that happens? Or has it maybe pulled you away from finishing so many times that it has habituated you to never finishing anything? Do you find it almost impossible to push something to the strongest finish you can? And geez, of course, are you ringmastering the circus of self-hatred and disappointment when you start scratching away at the blank sheet? A time that calls for a mindset of appreciation and humble gratitude for the chance to make something out of nothing. Save the circus mindset for when you're walking onto the stage to receive your Lifetime Achievement Award. That might be the only opportunity for it to be in balance. I think you are catching my drift on these different mindsets that we naturally and necessarily move into and out of as we work. I'll leave you with this. There are stranger, more exotic mindsets still. Couture, luxury mindsets, enjoyed only for fleeting moments by only the most fabulously self-indulgent artists. An example is the mindset that feels like you're not quite the one who's doing this piece of art. The mindset that feels this process is something quite out of its control. 
quite mysterious. Many feelings are possible here. The feeling that art is received or done automatically or transcribed from elsewhere. Now, does feeling these things to be true mean they are true? No, it doesn't. It definitely doesn't. The truth is that no one knows what's really going on here, and certainty is the only actual mistake. But, true or not, feeling like this practice does you, instead of you doing it, can provide a lot of peace, a lot of freedom, and can make it seem silly to stop for small reasons like insecurity or fear or even failure. What is any of that in the face of a true mystery that no one can investigate but you? Be open to anything, I would say. Even this mindset that looks for the author of all of this that is going down on the paper and seems to fail to find it. This mindset, in desperation, turns towards itself and says, surely it is I, this conscious mind state, that is making this drawing. And in that moment of searching for itself, it disappears. Thanks for drawing today.